All right, in this video, we'll go over how a intake manifold works, its main job and its purpose, and also why it looks like this, this funny shape. So let's get into it. So the intake manifold's main job is to distribute air or air fuel mixtures to the cylinders. So it's gonna start here from the throttle opening, and then it's gonna go through these runners and then make its way to each cylinder. And these are the cylinder openings, so one, two, three, and four. So this is an intake manifold for a four-cylinder car because we have four ports. And most intake manifolds nowadays are made of a hard plastic. So this is uh, good for saving weight and cost. And intake manifolds also serve as a mounting point for other accessories. So in this case, we have the fuel rail, the fuel injectors here, one, two, three, and four. On some cars, you'll have the purge valve mounted the MAP sensor, manifold absolute pressure, the tuning valve on the side here. And since this is directly mounted to the cylinder head, we're gonna have our individual gaskets. So one, two, three, and four. And whenever we have a plastic component uh, mating with a metal component, we're gonna have rubber gaskets like these. So each individual cylinder is gonna get one rubber gasket. And also a rubber gasket for the throttle body here. So just like any uh, gasket, these are prone to failure and once they fail they could cause a vacuum leak and uh, cause your uh, engine to misfire. So in this case this is an intake manifold off a port injection fuel system. So the injectors are going to be mounted on the intake manifold here. For port injection fuel systems, like in this case, uh, the intake manifold is designed in such a way to cause turbulence so that the air fuel mixture uh, mixes well before entering the combustion chamber. So port injection systems is where the fuel injectors are mounted right before the intake valve. So as you can see, we these are the tips of the fuel injectors. One, two, three, and four. Ready to spray fuel as soon as the intake valve opens. And the other type is gasoline direct injection. So if your car has that, you won't have any fuel injectors mounted on your intake manifold. They're gonna be uh, mounted directly on the cylinder head. So there's two main parts of an intake manifold. The plenum area, which is this area here, and the individual runners. So the plenum area is where the uh, all the air accumulate, and the runners are these long tubes that go to each cylinder. So whenever the air accumulates in the plenum, it's gonna get sucked in by each individual cylinder. So whichever cylinder has its intake valves open, the air is gonna make its way through that specific runner. Now the length and the diameter of each runner will depend on uh, the engine application. So smaller and more narrow intake runners are better for low engine speeds, and then wider and longer intake runners are better for higher engine speeds. But manufacturers can't design both uh, a long intake runner and a short one at the same time. So this is where the variable intake manifold comes in. This tuning valve here. So the tuning valve is going to change the diameter and the length of the runners inside the intake manifold depending on desired engine application. So if you're going at higher speeds, the intake tuning valve would open the uh, flaps inside and make the runners longer because at higher engine speed the engine needs more air and at low engine speed where the engine doesn't need that much air the tuning valve will be closed making it a shorter and thinner runners. Now how it works is just a small motor here with a lever connecting to the uh, tuning valve here and this will cause the shutters inside to open and close whenever you're going either high speeds or low speeds. Now let's see it in action. I'm just gonna apply 12 volt to the motor here and now we're gonna see this arm move. Okay, I couldn't really get it to move that much since it only has a short range of motion. So it either goes from here to here, um, just, to just enough to open the flap. And then I think the computer commands it to reverse polarity to bring it back. Now let's take it apart and actually see the shutter inside in action. So this is just a lever, so we could just pop this one out. That's all it is. It's a lever to connect the motor and the shutter. Now let's remove the motor. Now this is the motor responsible to move the lever and then open or close the shutter inside. Say four pin 
connection. Now let's remove the shutter and see what it looks like. So there you go, this is the shutter. So it either from the lever here, it either closes or opens. And that's all it is on the inside. It's a bit oily because of the uh, probably because of the PCB system. The lever attaches here and then it opens and closes depending on the size of the runners that the engine needs. And we got an O-ring here to make sure no air escapes. And that's it, there you have it. Just a quick little video on how an intake manifold works and how a uh, variable tuning valve works. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new. And as always, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more videos like these. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.